Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we're going to talk about the all new GPT-5, which was released like a couple of hours before with the Cloud Opus 4.1. We can just do a quick comparison. We'll see how these two models are behaving while writing the code, especially the automation testing. I'm not going to focus on many other different features that the GPT has offered. Like it has got an highest context window, which is like 32,000 in the GPT-4 model before. And in GPT-5, it has got 256,000 context window, which is amazing. So it is something very, very, very higher than any other model that it has got before and it has also got a lot of different features and you can see that you can create a very very complex application with a few prompts as you can see over here they have given some examples like how you can do it and you can also see that they have got an amazing coding capability and expressions of writing uh, any of the text and things these are things that are there in gpt5 which i'm not going to talk about i'm just going to focus on the the coding part which is going to be comparing with the cloud opus 4.1 versus the uh, GPT-5. So this is the Cloud Opus 4.1. We have already talked about that in our other video. If you have not watched that, I highly recommend you to go and watch there. It's quite amazing. So what I'm gonna do this time in this particular video is I'm gonna show you the GPT-5 model, which is available for free as a, a launch offer uh, for the free credit for the free users in the Cursor IDE. So if you have Cursor IDE, just go ahead uh, and download it. If you don't have it, you can use the free version over here. So I have the, got the GPT-5 uh, for free. So I'm gonna just show this one. And I'm gonna compare this with the uh, Cloud with the uh, Opus 4.1, which is this guy, right? So I'm gonna compare these two and I will show you how that actually works. So basically what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna uh, input the same prompt which I actually used while I was actually working with uh, the Cloud Opus demonstration even before, where I was asking to write a full framework of Playwright C -sharp .net code, including all the best practices, like the dependency injection, page object model, separation of concern, extended framework, running in containers, for the already recorded code from the, uh, from the Playwright code generator. So I have just got the same code over here, the same prompt. I'm gonna use the same prompt even for the GPT-5, which is running in the Cloud, uh, which is running in the cursor. And then I'm gonna run both of them over here in side by side. The moment I run that, you will notice that both of them are gonna start planning their next moves, like how uh, this guy is doing over here, the, the GPT-5. And it, the way that the thinking for the GPT-5 works, which I have watched on the demonstration while they were showing the demo on the, on the GPT launch, is that it thinks quite, quite cleanly this time. When I say cleanly, there is no more hallucination and the, the way it thinks is very stride and also it won't generate a lot of boilerplate cores. It is gonna be very, very amazing code. That's what they climb. And you can also see that the way it's gonna work with the uh, code creations are not going to be like how it was working before. Well, I say that, you're not gonna see a lot of class files gonna be generated for a simple operation. They're gonna keep things as straight as possible. So it's gonna do a common sense of um, common sense while trying to generate the code and things. And the same thing goes with the Cloud Opus 4.1 as well. We already saw that it is quite amazing compared to the Cloud Sonnet 4 model. And the way it creates the test is also quite amazing. See, the moment I ask the the sonnet, it has already started generating the code. They have created the structure and it is also generating things for me. So you can see that it has got the configurations, the driver, the extensions, and I also got the pages for the like uh, the login page, home page, application page, application upload page. And they also have got a base page, which is gonna show you like a parent class, which can be used in all these pages over here. So it has got all of these information and also got the tests for me over here. And you can see that it is also starting to write all all the code for me over here it's creating giving me that uh, this is the project structure that you have to create and this is the test setting file this is the configuration manager this is the playwright driver and this is the uh, details of that particular driver over here this is the page extensions uh, and things of that nature right so it's gonna have all of these things for me uh, over here including the classes and the page object model codes and things so, which is amazing. So we know that we have seen it even in the uh, earlier demonstration. So Cloud Opus is already amazing. It's doing a lot of different code. I'm gonna quickly see what's really happening with the GPT-5. Uh, you can see that it's already starting to add the 
uh, the project structure for me. I'm not really comparing the speed because speed is not the factor in here because it has to create the files uh, over here in this uh, cursor IDE. So I'm not gonna compare the speeds and things because over here it's pretty much like an uh, like an ask mode of the copilot in Visual Studio. That's what it is doing over here. But here it's an act mode, right? An agent mode where it's gonna create the files. It's trying to compile the project if it is working fine or not. It's ensuring everything is working as expected. It restores the NuGet package, which is required like playwright uh, packages. And then it has to do all of these things. So speed is not the matter here. I wanted to see if the code which is generated by these particular models are as expected uh, and how amazing they are. So over here, you can see that it has created two uh, projects. One is the EA framework, and there is one uh, one called as EA app uh, end to end test. This is pretty similar to what uh, the the Opus has done as well, like four dot one also done for us over here. Uh, and if I just gonna go back, you see that the structure is created. It's just creating an empty class file. There is no uh, tests being added so far. I'm just gonna wait until the the classes are being created. Oh, look at that. The opposite says that it has reached the maximum length. So it wanted to, if we wanted to continue our execution, then we need to uh, nudge the cloud uh, one more time. So I'm just going to nudge that. It's not a problem. I'm going to keep continuing, let the, uh, the cloud desktop to continue. And in the meantime, you can see that the tests are being added over here with the GPT-5, which is quite amazing. Let's just wait until the whole code is generated. And once it is generated, I can do a side-by-side -side comparison. And then we can also ask one more question to both these, uh, these models to help us generate even more amazing self-healing code. And we'll see who does the better job in here. I also tried that even before. And I'll tell you who is the winner in that particular arena. There we go. As you can see that the entire build has been completed by at least our uh, Claude uh, over here. It has completed all the operation and I have already hit the uh, the total limit for the Opus 4.1 until 4 p.m. today. So I can't really do anything until then. Uh, but at least you can see that uh, uh, we we have already got the details that we really need so it has created all the informations for us over here so you can see that the entire uh, details of creation of the tests is already there for us over here and in the meantime we just go back to our new hero which is the uh which is the gpt5 you can see that it has already uh, created the entire framework it has also created the entire tests for us over here and also it's created a test results you that look at that there is a results folder as well there is a test fixture so it has got all the framework including the configurations the driver extensions and the pages uh, and it has got i don't know why the framework has got the pages and the test doesn't have the pages which is kind of not correct because it should have the pages should be sitting ideally not in the framework side rather in the test side we can actually tell in the prompt to do that but at least the tests are running and you can see that the, there is one test failure and there is one test passing and it is working fine as expected which is pretty cool so i'm just going to just stop because i don't want that execution to happen because this uh, recording that i have got is not for that particular website that's the reason why this is not working just pretty cool so this is already done and you can see that the code generation for the five uh the gpt5 versus the uh, the the cloud opus are pretty close i mean they are not quite different at all they are pretty good uh, and in fact the number of tests it has generated uh is just only one in here and this guy has generated a bit more comparing to the uh, the actual gpt5 uh, if you ask me who is doing better uh, i would probably vote uh or actually to the Opus 4.1 because this is looking pretty good comparing to uh, comparing to the GPT-5 model that we have got over here. Because there was another follow-up question that I wanted to ask and I saw that the way that the Claude writes the code is way better than the GPT-5. So let's say I'm gonna ask that, can you write a self-healing uh, code for the locators uh, even if the DOM element uh, changes. I don't want to make any of the changes in the POM code, rather the system should take care of that. See, this is something that I'm asking to the GPT-5 
to write a self-healing code. And the moment I ask this question, it's going to write some code. And I have saw, and I saw the last time that the number of code that it generates and the mechanism that it creates uh, is, is actually far lesser than actually what the, the Opus really does. So if I'm going to go choose the Opus 4.1 and if I run this, I'm going to hit that particular limit, I'm sure, because I have already over exceeded the particular limit but at least you can see that as giving me a second chance to see what uh, look uh, how it's going to be creating that uh, code for me over here look at that it's going to be saying that this is the self-healing code so this is the i self-healing locator self-healing locator locator strategy locator healer locator cache look, and then healing report and there is our strategy see how the strategy it is writing for me over here and then this is the ai thingy as well look at that the element fingerprint dom analyzer similarity scorer so it's, it's fusing some artificial intelligence code inside the uh, in the actual code or as for us over here and now it is writing things for me look at that like how it is writing the self healing locators and strategy uh, and how it is writing the code this is quite amazing but if you see the exact same code which uh, which the gpt5 is writing and if i just going to go and show you maybe the number of code it generates see it's just saying locator heuristics that's what it it calls and there is this uh, alternative uh, from the call something like that this is the method that it's it's climbing to generate and now it's going to write the code and i've already seen like how the gpt5 generates versus what the cloud opus generate cloud opus code is way beyond what gpt does at least in this area and uh it, it is doing pretty well at least i know that the coding side the sonnet is way better and opus is way more better uh, and gpt is still catching up on that uh, but i don't still think that uh, gpt is there yet with comparison with the opus so that's what i see in in the comparison side but i've still i'm very much intrigued to see how this particular code is even going to work like how this this entire uh, look at our strategy and the ai and element fingerprints are really going to work i wanted to really try out this particular code i'm Kind, kind of intrigued to see how this is really working if this works i'm going to just integrate that with my code base that i already have but this is pretty cool to see that the way that the codes are being generated by these uh, these ai models are quite amazing and we wouldn't have thought about this kind of coding even before while we write the automation test but now these models are really opening up our bulbs to see how we can actually write a better code than compared to what we were writing all these days classically this is quite amazing. So that's it, guys. This is about how we can see the actual difference between the, the GPT-5 versus the Opus 4.1 and who is writing better. If you ask me who is writing better, at least in the testing side of the code, I think I'll still out the Opus 4.1. It looks pretty amazing, uh, whereas, um, whereas the GPT is still struggling to write a better code. It's still writing the same way of writing the codes, uh, and it's not as much as what the Opus can write. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Catch you in the next one.